Hello and welcome to the webinar Top Tips for Presenting a Wine or Spirit Brand to U.S. Importers. My name is Steve Ray. I'm president of Bevology. We're a marketing and import company that specializes in helping wine and spirit brands enter and grow in the U.S. market. Uh, a little bit about our company. Um, we function as the American guide or coach to help get clients what we term U.S. market ready. Um, as I said, we hold a U.S. Uh, Wine and Spirit national import license and we have an established distribution network. And while importing is not our core competency, we do do it as a part of product launch consulting and strategy because we know how important it is. In the third piece, uh, we offer education on the three-tier system, everything from price structures, import options, and even understanding uh, the American business culture ethic uh, in, in the wine business and spirits business. And lastly, we provide strategic planning, specifically uh, customized for individual brands to help navigate the complexities of the three-tier market. But enough about us, let's focus on what we're talking about today. And the goals of this webinar are fourfold. One is to help you understand U.S. importers, what it is they're interested in, so that you can present yourself to them and have a better chance of success. In order to do that, you need some ideas on how to get that first meeting. Once you have that first meeting, you need to prepare for it to make sure that you can take the lead and that uh, you'll improve your chances of getting to the next meeting. And then fourth, to help you be different. And we'll be talking about this throughout the presentation. And the key here is very simple. Um, if you look at the numbers, uh, many importers tell me they get 100 calls a week. And of those 100 calls, maybe 10 get through the firewall that they've put up. And of those 10, maybe one gets accepted. Question is, how are you going to be the one out of 100 that they actually talk to on the phone and ultimately meet with? And that's what this whole presentation is. So let's start with a definition. Um, an importer is someone who buys wines and spirits, wine, wines and or spirits from an export producer, we also call them suppliers, and is then licensed to resell it to distributors. So an import license is given by the TTB, which is part of BATF, which is part of the Treasury Department. And it's national, it's, it's, it's uh, provided by the federal government. Um, so the license is national, that doesn't necessarily mean that your agreement with a supplier, I'm sorry, your agreement with a particular uh, importer uh, may not be national. You may only be looking at one or two states or region and so forth. Contrast that with a distributor. And I know these words are sometimes used some, uh, synonymously in uh, Europe and other parts of the world. In our world, they are very different. The synonym for distributor is wholesaler. So wholesaler distributor mean the same thing in the US. And their job is to buy a product from a licensed importer, which they then resell to on and off premise accounts. Uh, distribution licenses are granted by the states, not the federal government. And while it's true that many uh, distributors do operate in multiple states, the reality is each of those state operations is an independent functioning entity and has a general manager. And um, it's the rule of thumb is that the general manager of the state uh, business is the one that gets to say yes or no from the import uh, wholesaler side. So let's think about importers and what makes them tick, okay? To start off with, they're not sitting around waiting for calls from um, export brands to say, hey, I've got this wonderful brand I want to present you. They have their hands full running their existing business and, and being responsive to their current supplier base and making sure that they're making their numbers and working with distributors and managing all their personnel and doing all the things that they have to do. So that means they do not want to hear how wonderful your product is because when you're first talking to them, that's not really germane to the issue. What is germane to the issue is this one. They want to know what your product will do for them. And that can fall into the category of increase their overall margins, expand their portfolio to areas that they not only currently don't serve, but are specifically interested in, and other types of uh, programs like that. It, it allows them to fill containers from certain countries and so on and so forth. Very practical reasons, very little of it having to do with uh, the quality or value of your brand to start. They wanna know that you understand how the US system works. 
And most importantly, they do not want to invest the time to teach you. So it's incumbent on you to get smart, learn the business, attend webinars like this, because you're going to find that if you do get through to that first conversation, they're going to be asking you questions to test you to see if you know the difference between a control and open state and a difference between a control and open state for wine versus spirits and the definition of a franchise state and what that means in terms of uh, distribution and so forth. So you really need to invest your time and energy in understanding the U.S. market so that you can speak knowledgeably when you get tested and you don't even realize that the test is going on. And that's because they want to know that you are ready, willing, and able to work with them, that you have invested the time, you have the personnel, and you have access to the funding to be successful and have a practical understanding of what it's going to take to get there in the U.S. market. So you boil it all down and the most important thing and I hope the most important uh, lesson you take out of this is be different. If somebody else has done it, told you a great way that they got a meeting, find a way to spin it and do it differently. Okay, here's some practical advice on ways to get an importer's attention. The easiest one, it's the one that most people choose and probably the least effective one is a cold call. Just pick up the phone and call them. Now that presupposes that you are able to identify what importers you want to talk to and who the person is at the importer that you want to talk to. Our recommendation is to, to instead of a cold call, make it a warm call to have someone whom you know uh, make an introductory phone call or email to that particular importer and the particular person at the importer uh, who is responsible for new brands and introduce you. They're much more likely to take the call if it's been uh, a, a warm introduction. A second idea uh, that we see is not very frequently used, but highly recommended. Uh, LinkedIn has become very, very important tool in the US market. And oftentimes you can get the attention and engage in a conversation with someone on LinkedIn who may not even um, answer the phone when you call. So absolutely go through LinkedIn, find out who you know, uh, uh, Common, you have in common and uh, reach out with those people to make an introduction on either LinkedIn or uh, through the phone call. You can also, and we highly recommend this as well, to plan for and attend industry trade events. There's two that I've highlighted here, WSWA, Wine and Spirits Wholesalers Association, which takes place, I believe it's in uh, April this year in Orlando. And then the USA Trade Tasting, which is taking place in May, and that's going to be in New York City. And what happens there is you got two options. One, you can schedule a meeting there, which is great, and that presumes that you've been able to get through and actually been the one out of 100 that they took the call from. Uh, but if not that, what you could also look for is a hallway bump, and we find those are incredibly effective. And that means if you're at WSWA and you're walking down the halls with me or somebody who knows uh, uh, has the connections in the US market they see someone they know they can do an introduction and all of a sudden you're engaged in a one-on-one -on -one con conversation with a very important person who might never take your call had you not been at that trade show because being there indicates you're serious about the US market I uh, have this uh, list on my website. If you go to webologyinc.com slash events, you'll see a list not only of all the upcoming events in chronological order, but also a list of all the uh, upcoming uh, brand tastings and evaluations and so on and so forth. A couple of more ideas, okay? Um, this one is fantastically uh, effective but not very well used, and that is to get a referral from a significant retailer or restaurant F&B. And even better than just a referral, do some pilot projects with those people so that your brand gets in there, and we can talk about ways of how you can do that, so that you can establish some commercial success before you really have any commercial distribution. But it allows you then to go to an importer and say, hey, I've already got business that I can bring to you. Once again, that's a great way to separate yourself from the 99 other people uh, who are clamoring for their attention. 
Uh, second one is to pay for it. And there's events like World Wine Meetings, World's Leading Wines, ECRM Market Gate. And these are ones where various ways of getting paid, but basically you pay for it uh, to get in front of distributors who have said, yes, I'll attend this and listen to presentations from 20 to 30 to 40 um, brands. They're very expensive. Uh, they can be very effective, but think about the closing rate on these. If your closing rate on cold calls is uh, maybe one out of 100, your closing rate on these in terms of getting an importer to take you in maybe one in 20, but it's still 5%, which is not really very good. Uh, we also recommend that you reach out to your country or regional trade promotion agency. Uh, oftentimes they have contacts at distributors and you can use them to warm a call or make an introduction for you. And then I would highly recommend you do this. Again, it's on my website in videos. Watch the importer panel at last year's or at the 2016 USA trade tasting. The three gentlemen there, well, the bald guy behind the podium is me, but the three gentlemen there are respectively from Constellation, Palm Bay and Winebow. Those are the three guys who make the yes decision at an import at those three importers. And this is them talking about what they want to hear from you, what they want to see from you, how you should prepare yourself. So it's a great compliment uh, to the presentation that you're listening to right now. It's one thing to get their attention, but it's another thing to keep their attention. And to do that, you really need to respect their time. And you can show that, demonstrate it by having all your information ready, but not dumping everything all at once. Let me tell you how wonderful my brand is and my grandfather founded the vineyard and this thing, or we've been in the industry for five generations. Don't push so hard. Be prepared to let them ask questions and talk and talk to you, tell you about their needs so that when you respond, you can respond in terms of how your brand fits their needs, not how great your brand is. And that's important because the answers you give matter less than the chemistry that you create. The chemistry and the, the sense of uh, community and the feeling that you have similar philosophies of the way that you go to market and that you understand them and have done your homework is a tremendously powerful advantage that you would have over the other 99 uh, people trying to get their attention. And the last, as I said before, be different, be unique, at the end of the day, you have to be yourself. You have to be true to yourself. And if you're not comfortable speaking in English, find a solution for that. Okay, maybe you have an interpreter online or maybe you do it on gotomeeting.com or Skype so they can actually see your face uh, to put a more human touch to it. Uh, those are just a few ideas. Uh, I would urge you to be creative as well, but the key, as we're saying here in the last one, is, is to be unique because that will get you to stand out. Okay, I talked about demonstrating that you've done your homework. And by that I mean show that you know about the importer, uh, the structure of the company, the people who work there, the countries they import from, the states that they're operating in, the brands that they handle, acquisitions that they made, dispositions that they've made, other things of new, news or note uh, that you can find out about them. Um, and you can find that information. There's a wealth of it on everybody's website. And my recommendation is before you call anybody, make sure you read through the entire website. That's right. Look at every tab and dig deep because what you'll find is, for example, in the press releases, all the news that's important about them that they felt was important to tell other people, absolutely, 100% read those things. If they've got a new CEO, a new CFO, if they've expanded into a new country, if um, they've expanded distribution into some new states, um, you need to know that so that when you talk to them, you can drop bits of the, that information and that'll make them feel a lot more comfortable that you've done your homework, that the chemistry is better and you understand them. We also urge that you be specific and that you use examples with numbers, names, dates, um, specific things that, once again, show that you've done your homework um, and that you understand what that um, order is all about, all about. So let's talk about getting ready, okay? One of the things I recommend is listen to the webinar that I uh, you can find on the Beverage Trade Network um, as well as on my website is Top Mistakes Wine and Spirits Brands Make Entering the U.S. Market. But that's just one. There's a whole bunch of them out there that allow you to get educated on the U.S. market, the three-tier system, the role of agency brands, what's been happening with uh, consolidation 
uh, both in terms of importers as well as distributors, and how that's fundamentally changing the face of the options that you have in the U.S., in particularly the decline of agency brand type import structures. Second, make sure that your product is fully ready. Uh, I can't tell you how many times um, people reach out to me as an importer or I find out that they've reached out and their liquid or their formula has not been approved yet. The, the bottle is not designed or produced. They haven't thought through the reshipper. They haven't gotten UPC and SEC codes because you need different codes for the US UPC and SEC codes. Um, may not have gotten your COLA certificate of label approval and formula registrations. All that kind of stuff has got to be fixed uh, and in place so that you appear fully ready. If there's a chink in your armor, if there's a sense that you are not 100% fully ready, you're giving someone a reason to say, okay, call me back when you're ready. You just lost it. Okay. And lastly, yes, you need to pre present information about your company, uh, company in a summary form, but make sure when you do it, you do it in a way that differentiates you from everybody else, that defines you uniquely and, and dif you know, obviously differentiates you, but also is very short. They don't want to listen to a lecture. If you can do it in one minute or less, it's probably going to be effective. If it takes you more than one minute to talk about your company and your brand and give it a positioning, uh, you're probably taking too long. So continuing on getting ready. Uh, a key piece is also to have your product promotion materials ready, written in English, a sell sheet already done, um, case guard, shelf talker, bottleneck, or all of the things that people are ultimately going to ask for. Now, yes, it's probably true that whatever you design and produce and print isn't going to be the thing that you end up going with for that particular importer. But what it says in a very, very compelling way is we've got our act together. We've got all our pieces together. And by the way, we want to work collaboratively with you to help refine them to work in your marketplace. If you do that, you'll find a lot more receptivity and a lot better credibility. But make sure those things are fully written, printed out. You can do it on short run uh, production. But the idea that if you give them a printed document as opposed to even a PDF or a mock-up of uh, something that's been designed, you make it sound like it's real, they're going to believe it's real. And fifth, Set realistic expectations. This is a big mistake a lot of people make is setting up unrealistic expectations in terms of anticipated numbers of cases, the target markets that they uh, you're going into and why, and, and demonstrate a recognition of timing, willingness to work with the importer to help define those objectives. In, in our world, arrogance is deadly. That the more um, humility you show, the more humble you are to say, okay, it's your market, Mr. Importer, let me work with you. I'm interested in working with you to help figure out what the right things to do are in the U.S. And I'll give you one simple case in point. A lot of people say, well, I want to go into New York and California as my primary markets. Chances are that's not the right answer because New York, uh, wine and spirit store can only, a package store we would call it, can only sell wines and spirits, cannot sell any food items. Even up until recently, they couldn't even sell ice. Okay. And it's there limited to a single owned store. So there are no chains. Contrast that in California, which is chain dominated and wines and spirits can be sold in grocery stores. Two completely different uh, types of markets as different as Sweden is from Germany. Um, and you need to recognize and do that. Add into the fact that if somebody, if your guy is based in New York and they have to go out to California, they just blew three days to go for one meeting. It makes a lot more sense if you're going to pick two markets and New York is going to be one of them. Do it in New York and New Jersey or New York and Connecticut because they're contiguous and you can get there quicker. So again, the practicalities of understanding uh, how the U.S. market works. Sixth is be ready to answer the question, what kind of U.S. market support do you have planned? I talked about that in terms of the sales promotion materials, but it expands to things like sales incentive programs, uh, how much you're allocating for samples, a consumer and trade advertising program that you may have engaged or you're talking with a PR agency or a social media agency that's active and knows uh, the beverage uh, 
the beverage business in the U.S. and more importantly has access to the influencers and decision makers in the trade. So you're not starting from scratch. They want to know that you have a plan or that at least you're willing, most importantly, not least, willing to support the brand beyond the introduction period. A lot of brands come to us and say, I've got a budget of X hundred thousand dollars for launch. And the first question they're going to get is, and what do you have for the follow-up year? And more often than not, the answer is, oh, well, 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 we're going to be successful. So we're going to, we're going to support it out of uh, current revenues. Um, not a very good answer, not a very good idea, and probably a good way to uh, end the conversation right there. You also need to be able to address uh, what kind of sales personnel support are you going to have? Is your distiller or your winemaker going to be coming over? Is your expert, export manager going to be based in the U.S.? If so, are they going to, uh, and if not, are they going to come to the U.S. frequently and will they be allocating the time to work with importers and distributors? Do you have plans for brand ambassadors? And the answer to that question is yes. In some manner, shape, or form, it's almost a requirement now in the U.S., um, but you really need to be creative in the way you field brand ambassadors to make sure that they are scalable in terms of the kinds of cost you're putting into them for the results you're going to be getting. We like to think of them not as brand ambassadors, but as dedicated local salespeople that really would be paralleling or shadowing what a distributor would be doing for you. Okay, one more. Uh, Get scores, rating awards from competitions and publications and critics that are relevant in the U.S. and recognized in the U.S. And there's four that I would point out uh, that accept brands that are not currently sold in the United States. That's right. You can, from wherever you are, whether it's Santiago, whether it's Auckland, whether it's uh, Margaret River, or whether it's from Bordeaux, enter your brands if they're not currently imported in the San Francisco Wine and Spirits Competition, the New York International Wine and Spirits Competition, Tastings, which is Beverage Testing Institute, www.tastings.com, and also uh, the Ultimate Beverage Challenge, which evaluates both wines, spirits, as well as cocktails. And these are ways of when you're making your first call to someone, you'll be able to say, oh, we have a 92 from Ultimate wine challenge it might be. That's going to open the door a lot uh, more for you. And the reality is publications like Wine Spectator uh, don't do uh, reviews of not currently imported brands. Wine Enthusiast does, uh, but it's, uh, it, it's something you should, you should consider. These four are the majors. Um, I talked about Wine Spectator, Robert Parker. Uh, I, I mentioned that they're less relevant, particularly to millennials. And the, the reason is pretty simple. It's millennials don't like to subscribe, or generally don't subscribe to magazines, and they don't pay to get access to online rating services. So in the case of Wine Spectator, you have to be a member of winespectator.com to get access to their ratings. And to most millennials, winespectator.com really doesn't exist because they just don't see it when they're accessing information the way they normally do, which is... Uh, by way of search or apps online. Something to think about. And eighth, know your history. Um, you need to be able to provide a full disclosure of any past importing that's happened in the U.S. So even if it was a one-time sale where it happened in just one state uh, 10 years ago, okay, you need to have the facts ready. Who is the importer? Who is the distributor? What states were you in? Is there any dis uh, residual inventory? Are there any broker commissions that are, that are done? And even though you may be the new export manager and don't know the answers to those, you really need to do your homework because I guarantee you they will if they're interested in you. And if they find out there's uh, seven-year-old white wine kicking around in somebody's inventory, or there is some commissions due to a uh, representative that you hired in one of the control states uh, that has never been resolved. You need to make sure that there are no, we would call them skeletons in the closet, and that um, you have a clean bill of health. Uh, you don't want anybody to uh, find something out about working with you that they don't want to be surprised by. So, Bringing it all to a close here, 
you need to know the prospective importers. And here's a checklist of the things you need to do or should do or could do to separate yourself from everybody else on research that you can do yourself. All right. First, read their website from beginning to end and all the sub navs tabs as well. You'll find a wealth of information in there, even in many cases, telling you what states they do business in. So if you go and call with, call somebody who says on their website that they only do business in the southeast and you want uh, an importer that uh, is active in the Northeast, don't be calling that importer. <laughs> and if you do and they ask that question, it's going to be pretty obvious you haven't done the homework. Know what countries they import from. All of them list uh, the brands and the con countries they import from on their website. Very easy, uh, easily accessed information. A tougher one to find is what states they do business in, but a little diligent homework, a little diligent research, and you will be able to find that out. Again, it gives you a competitive advantage because you're going to know stuff that your competitors don't and be able to turn that into reasons why that importer would be interested in talking to you. What other new suppliers have they added recently? And what does that tell you about their goals? I'll use one example. Cape Classics happens to be a, a, a client of ours. Was started in uh, 1992 as a South African importer, but have expanded uh, significantly so in France. Okay, if you uh, went by their name, you wouldn't know that they were importing from France. But it does tell you something about um, what they're doing as an importer and what direction they're going, and it gives you a little bit more insight so that when you approach them, if you decide to approach them, you'll uh, you have better chance of success. Do a Google search of the company and top management, their particular names, looking for recent profiles, interviews, quotes, trade news. Um, there's a wealth of information out there to be found, and it's pretty obvious when you haven't done your homework. Uh, so once again, if you do these things, come up with one or two ideas, thoughts, names uh, that you can drop into the conversation that reinforce the idea the recognition on the importer side that, yeah, you've done your homework and you know what you're talking about. We also recommend that you talk to one or two brands that they currently handle. We all know our industry is very small and uh, it's not six degrees of separation. It's probably more like 1.6 degrees of separation. So uh, call your friends in the industry, look at, link, look at LinkedIn and who has connections where, and you can find out what other brands uh, they import and who they work with. And chances are you probably know somebody who knows them. You can do a credit check on them. There's, uh, you know, one of the issues that most suppliers have is they've been burned before by an importer who didn't pay or they allowed uh, credit sooner than they may should have. One way of uh, getting at that is you can do a credit check. And there's a bunch of ways that you can do that in the U.S. Uh, doing a D&B, Dun & Bradstreet report is one of them. And then lastly, visit a few stores and on-premise accounts in the markets where you want to be in so that you can reinforce that you've done your homework yet once again. So if, if it's, uh, I'm making this up, if it's Winebow and you come to the U.S. market uh, or uh, now they're in, in Georgia and you happen to visit Atlanta, you can drop that into a conversation. Make sure that you've been to the store and can say, hey, I was looking at that and I saw you had really good distribution or presence on the shelf um, in such and such a store or such and such a chain or such and such a restaurant. And uh, it gives you something to talk about, but also subtly reinforces the fact that you've done your homework and you're different than everybody else. So um, to summarize, this whole thing is all about while your end objective is to get them to say yes, then it's not going to happen right away. Your immediate goal is to get to the next meeting. And in order to do that, the best things that you can do is get ready, get educated in the U.S. market, make sure you have all the things completed that you need, liquid label, formula, promo materials, sample bottles that you can leave behind if you get lucky enough. A presentation you can send to them, send to them when they say, okay, send me a sample and send me something like a short PowerPoint presentation. Do your homework. Uh, 
that's going to differentiate you from everybody else. And then be creative in getting their attention. If you watch the uh, presentation uh, from the USA Trade Tasting I talked about, uh, Scott Addis from Winebow made a good point that somebody sent him a package that had some nuts in it, and it said you'd have to be nuts not to talk with them. Well, um, Scott found that to be a very, very creative way of getting his attention. And I don't know if he ended up taking that brand, but it certainly did result in him uh, getting the next phone call. So summarizing the summary, really simple here. Be different. Do the unexpected. Be yourself. Find ways to separate yourself and differentiate yourself from everybody else, but don't waste their time. So I hope you found this useful. I've tried to keep it relatively short. If you'd like a PDF of this presentation, just send me an email, steve at bevologyinc.com. Uh, and here's the rest of my con uh, contact information and also the website. And you'll find a number of uh, other webinars, videos, articles, and so forth there on uh, how to prepare for the U.S. market. So thank you very much for sharing your time with me. And I look forward to hearing from you. And I also look forward to your being successful in breaking into the U.S. market. Thank you very much.